Hi guys, this is Nick Howdy. I welcome you to this new video tutorial series on implementing refresh token functionality in our Angular 7 existing application. In this video tutorial, we'll learn how we will set up the environment that is required for us to implement this refresh token functionality in our application. Since we're not going to code the application from scratch, we will use our previous application that we created, that's the base application, which is available in the following repo. The link for this dev op repo will be included in the video description. So once you open the link or click on the link, you will be redirected to this dev op repo where you will have the option to download the entire contents as a zip file or you can clone this repo. For this video tutorial, the first thing that we want to do is download the entire content of this repo as a zip file. So I'll click on the option and then I will be downloading the entire repository. I don't need to keep this browser open. I can close this. Let's go to the downloads folder. <coughs> so now inside the downloads folder, I have my zip file. All I want to do is double click so that the contents are extracted. Once the folder has been extracted, I'm going to move it to my desktop and I can close the downloads finder view. And then all I want to do is double click, open this folder. Now this folder has all the contents that is needed to run the base application. So first thing that we want to do is go and create a database. But as I mentioned in the introduction video, that we, need, we would need to modify our database in order for this application to implement JWT and refresh tokens. So to do that, first thing that we want to do is first run this application in Visual Studio. You can use Visual Studio Code or you can use Visual Studio IDE. And I'm going to just double click so that the application directly runs in Visual Studio IDE. You can download Visual Studio IDE from the official link that will be provided in the video description. Or you can just Google it and you will find Visual Studio. It's very popular. And if you are someone who's developing applications, you must be aware. So next thing that you want to do is go and open the migration folders and you will see there's a bunch of migrations that was created from the previous application. I'm going to go ahead and move this to trash. We don't need this anymore. So I am going to remove it and I'm going to delete this. Make sure you click on the delete option if you're on a Mac because removing it from the project just removes it from the project, not from the folder. So I will choose the delete option and it will delete it completely. Next thing that we want to do is right click and open our terminal because we would need to have our terminal. So go on tools and then open terminal. We need to cd into this application folder so that we can run certain commands. Now let's go ahead and start creating some classes or some models that are required for JWT refresh tokens. So the first class that we're going to create is the token model class. We already have a few classes here like the login view model, the product model and the register view model. I'm going to right click, add a new file, go to general, select an empty C sharp class, call this as token model and then just create new. Now here we will get rid of the constructor since we don't need it here and we will create all the required properties inside this class. So let's paste the required properties. So just paste it here and we have the required properties, the unique identifier, the client ID that is required to sign the tokens, the value of the token itself, and uh, the date time, 
and the user ID to whom the token was issued, the last modified date and time of the token, and the expiry time of the token when the token is going to expire. Our refresh token will also expire like the JWT, but the expiry time of the refresh token will be greater than the JWT expire time. So now what we want to do is add the missing references so that we can get rid of the error that is using system component model dot data annotation. And then we can save this file. We are done for the token model class. Next thing that we want to do is right click and add a new file. And this time we are going to create an empty C sharp class and we are going to call this class as token request model. and create new. So let's get rid of this constructor. We don't need it. And let's create the required properties for the token request model. So paste it here and we have the one type property which can either be the password or can be the refresh token. So when the user logs in, the Guan type will be password because when he is logging in, he's going to provide his password. And based on the Guan type, the application code will decide whether it's a refresh token request or if it is a login request. And you will understand this as we proceed further coding this refresh token feature, the how we are going to use this property. The second property is the client ID that we need with the token. So the client ID is like the client secret that we use in JWT to sign the JWT token. Similarly, our refresh token will also have its client ID and we will make sure that the client ID matches the client ID in our database. And by that way, we can ensure that the token was issued to the user by our application and he has not stolen or got it from somewhere else. Now the username is required for the user who is requesting the token and the refresh token, that's the value of the refresh token and the password property. Now let's save this and create another model class. Call this as token response model, so token response. So Note, we have a token request model when they are requesting a token. We require the following properties. And when we are sending the token to the user, this is going to be the token response model, which will contain the properties that we are going to add now. We don't need the constructor here. And let's add the required properties. So when we are sending the response, we are going to send the JWT token. We are going to send the exp expiration time for the token. We are going to send the refresh token itself. We are going to send the user role since we need that in our client side to view certain components. So user role. And then finally, we are going to also send the user name. We are not going to send the password in the response. We are just going to send the following properties so that we can use it in the front end. That is the client application, which is developed using Angular code. So now we can save this and we can close the token response model and token request model as we are done with adding all the required properties. Next is that we have to create a another class which will be the application user class, which we will code in the next video tutorial because we have to modify the identity user table so that we can add some additional properties. And since this video tutorial is just adding the properties, I'm just going to stop it over here and start coding the application user class in the next video tutorial because it is a totally different topic. And if you have any questions, use the comment section. And if you have not set up the environment, please watch the introduction video. 
as I've clearly mentioned, the steps to set up the development environment. Now, that's it for this video tutorial. Please like and subscribe my channel, Tech Howdy.